Join the Discord, link down in the description. Thank you. Hello everybody, in today's video, something a little bit different. So I'm gonna be showing off my settings that I run in Destiny 2. This has been kind of a requested video for a long time. Occasionally in my comments when I look on a lot of different videos, people will ask me different settings as well as just overall how to get a higher FPS and all that fun stuff. So I figured I'd just throw it all into one video. So if somebody asks me, I can kind of just send them this video and as well as try to help you guys optimize your FPS a little bit more. I'm gonna go over my Destiny 2 settings, which applies to everybody. And then I'll also be going over some PC settings for if you're on PC to help like lower your latency and maybe I'll maybe help you out a little bit in terms of just overall settings for PC. And then I will also go over what equipment I have as well real quick, just to answer any questions there. But as I said, starting off, we're gonna be looking at the D2 settings just because that applies to everyone. In terms of my mouse settings, I run a seven sensitivity with a 0.9 ADS. In terms of mouse sensitivity, most people will typically run a five to nine, depending on what their DPI is. I currently run an 800 DPI. Most people typically run 400, 800, or 1600. You don't need to necessarily fall into those categories, but most people just do because it's just the easiest sensitivity to follow. And overall, I like a little bit of a faster sense, not the fastest by any means, but I like being able to move a little bit quicker with it. But like I said, most people typically run between five and nine, maybe a little bit higher or lower, depending on their DPI. Nothing inverted. Aim smoothing is off because we don't want that. We don't want anything to mess with our aim. We just want to be able to shoot things. In terms of keybinds, nothing super crazy here. We walk with the normal WASD, G for finishers. My emote buttons are pretty standard. Now, I don't use push to talk in game, but when I use things like Discord, I use V for push to talk. So anytime I'm talking to anybody, I'm holding down V. I just hold it with my thumb because my thumb's normally just sitting by the space bar anyway. So it makes it very easy to click that. And if I need to hit my space bar, it's super easy to just push my thumb down as well. In terms of firing and reloading, all pretty generic stuff. We right click to fire. That's pretty normal. I don't know why anyone would ever switch that. Reload is R. I don't use auto melee. My charge melee is my first button on my mouse. I have two buttons on my mouse on the side. So the first one goes to charge melee and then my uncharged melee is T. I think it's very important to have separate keybinds for this just because for certain things, sometimes you want to throw a smoke and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want to throw a celestial fire and sometimes you want to save it. Like I think it's necessary, not necessarily the most like crucial thing to have, but I think it is important. It takes a little bit of time to get used to it, but I think it's worth it. In terms of zooming, I have hold zoom on, not toggle. I think toggle is a little clunky to play with, but I'm sure some people do it. Light attack, heavy attack, normal stuff. Blocking is C jumping is a space bar and then i have up on the scroll wheel to also jump that helps me move really fast with warlock and titan that's how you get like that super crispy skate that you can get and sometimes you can go flying off staircases with warlock it's really really important and the main reason that you'd play mouse and keyboard honestly is that the warlock and titan movements are really really good but it's also good on hunter as well because if you didn't know if you hold down your space bar it will actually make you go a little bit higher on your hunter jump instead of just clicking it it's not much of a difference but with the scroll wheel you can guarantee that you get that height every time so it's still beneficial on hunter as well but i don't use it as much in terms of sprinting and crouching i use hold for both because it just is a better response time and you can actually do it a lot quicker going in and out of the sprinting and then the same thing with crouching you can teabag strafe a lot quicker with hold than crouch i don't typically do it a whole lot but when i do it is nice to have to be able to go really, really quick. In terms of class ability, I just pull down on my scroll wheel. And then for my air move, think Icarus dash and whatnot, I can just click on my scroll wheel to activate that. In terms of interaction, this will be E, grenade is Q, super F. My breakout of stasis is N, transcendence is B. And this is another little weird one. I don't like clicking one in games. It's not because my hands are small by any means. My hand can cover the keyboard and I would consider them like a decent size. I've just never enjoyed clicking one for whatever reason. So my second button on my mouse is my kinetic weapon. And then two and three are my energy, which is pretty normal. Now I never switch these either. I know a lot of people, depending on where their primary is, they'll make it so their primary is always like one key and then their secondary is always another key. I typically am fine with switching around and knowing what key I need to click to pull out my shotgun or something. So I don't switch them off, but if you do, it's fine, obviously. In terms of vehicle stuff, we don't really care about that. And I don't think any of this stuff's important. In terms of controller, I don't really play controller a whole lot, but when I do 13 looking sensitivity, a lot of people will typically run at least higher than 10, but 13's personally what I run. Haven't really played it much since they've actually increased the sensitivities. 0.7 to have a little bit of slower ADS helps with, you know, 
turning a little bit faster. Turning scalar is 0.8. And then I haven't really messed with the dead zones personally, just because I haven't really played controller since they've released. In terms of video settings, I for windowed mode, I run full screen. That I think is just the best. It's the best for performance. For resolution, I just run native. You don't really need to run stretch by any means or change it too much. So I'm 19 by 20, 1900, 1920 by 1080, sorry. V-Sync is off. And then frame rate cap, I have off as well. Realistically, I could put this on a 244. That's my hertz on my monitor, but I just leave it off. Field of view 105, most good players typically max it out just because you can see a lot more. But depending on the player you are, some players like it a little bit lower. It just depends on the preference, but mine is personally max. In terms of screen bounding, I actually have it not fully sent out because I like my radar to be a little bit closer. I could zoom in in a little bit more if I wanted to, but I also don't want it to be in the way, including the HUD. So I just have it going between, like in between the lowest it can go and the highest it go, just so I, it can be a little bit closer, but not too distracting. In terms of screen brightness, I have maxed out. I just like to be able to see. I don't want things to be super dark, but so overall it's the best in my opinion to have it, but it really depends on your settings. If you have some of your PC settings to make your computer a little bit brighter, you might not want it. In terms of video settings, I just have all my things set to lowest for the most part because I just want as high quality as possible. The only thing that I sometimes will turn up depending on what it is, is I'll turn the texture quality up a little bit just so my guns don't look super gross in hand. But for the most part, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Motion blur, you should always have off. It's terrible. I don't know why this is a thing that's naturally normally on any game you go on to. And then when impulsing, I would turn this off as well. In terms of render resolution, typically you want this to be as high as 100 as you can. I personally just do 95 because it takes a little bit less to, of your RAM to run it. So it's always nice, but typically the lower it gets, the worse your game is, especially if you're having some issues with frame rates, you're getting a lot of hiccups or stuttering, or you just can't get a consistent high frame rate. Lowering this can definitely help, but remember the lower you get it, the worse your game is going to look. So most people I would say just stay at 100. My PC could definitely handle being at 100, but I just have always ran 95, so I kind of just leave it personally. In terms of sound, nothing really crazy here. I just have my music off. I typically keep my volume pretty low. I don't like it to be super, super loud if I'm being honest with you. And for the most part, I can hear things in Destiny, but this obviously isn't a super sound focused game. So I don't really care to have it crank it in my headset. In terms of gameplay, nothing super crazy here. I have my HUD on high instead of full just to help it be a little less annoying or distracting. My radar background is a medium just so I can see it a little bit better, but not so it's like super obnoxious. Um, here is my colorblind sending. I know a lot of people ask about that. I don't keep any of the full auto stuff in terms of reticle location. You should always have center. It's just it's so good because if you have center, it's in the center of the screen. If you did the below center, obviously it's below center. So it'll be like down here, which is like OG consoles, which for the most part, you can make it work, but just run center. It just it, it's so much easier in terms of reticle color. I just use the pink one. I don't know when I was when I first started playing on PC, I always just I picked the pink one. I was like, ooh, shiny. And I've just gone with it. it. I don't think it really matters too much. All of these are fine. I don't think Destiny 2 is like a suit. You don't need to be pinpoint accurate in Destiny 2. So seeing your reticle isn't the most important thing in the world. So even if you run like black or something, I think it's fine. Uh, in terms of helmet, helmet always stays on. FPS to play, I have it on just so I can see if I'm hiccuping or stuttering a lot. And yeah, I think that's about it in terms of that. This stuff wouldn't really matter too much. But yeah, okay, cool. So that's all my Destiny 2 settings. Let's get into some of the PC settings real quick. All right, so we're on to the PC settings. So if you do play mouse and keyboard, I highly recommend, because a lot of people don't do this, you'll look up your mouse into the thing here, and then you're going to go to advanced mouse, or advanced mouse options. And then you're gonna click on it here. All this looks fine. I would just keep this at like the six mark here. This is just kind of your sensitivity of your mouse. I would keep that like the same. And then we're gonna go to pointer options here. Now you're gonna wanna make sure your enhanced pointer precision is off. What this is gonna do is essentially put on a acceleration. So if your mouse is over here and I move it like to the middle of the screen, it's gonna be the same distance that I'm moving my mouse every single time. Where if you put on the enhanced one, it's gonna like, as you accelerate, the mouse itself will speed up and it just makes for a very inconsistent experience. So you, just for for muscle memory purposes, you are going to want to have this off. And a lot of times it's on at base and a lot of people could play PC for like a year or two and not think about it. 
So I even if you, even if you're playing PC right now and you think it's off, I recommend you just go check that it's off. It can really mess with your aim and the muscle memory. And now we are actually going to go into some of the destiny settings to affect some stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down here and you're going to click app app data percent. So percent app data percent and you'll get this folder here. So then we're going to click on it and then we're going to go to Bungie. Then we're going to go here reference. Then we're going to click on this right click and we are going to open with notepad. And now this is going to give us all the files to destiny. This is all the settings that we looked at in game, but we can actually lower the value here. So there's two main things we're going to be looking here. We're going to be looking for the low latency option here, right here. And you're going to want to set this to zero because most of the time it's going to be like a one or two, but you want it to be zero because you want it to be the lowest latency you can get. And then you're also going to be scrolling all the way down here to your mouse smoothing because this one will be set to one or two as well. And you want this to be zero. Even if you have it off in game, for whatever reason, Destiny 2 has mouse smoothing just there in general. So you can turn it off in the game files so it doesn't mess with your aim. Then there's actually a one other thing you can do here depending on what you want. And that is actually you can turn off shadows. So this is normally going to be on a one when you load in. But if you come over here and get rid of it and put a zero it will actually turn off your shadows and i'll show you like a clip on screen just running around the jab which if you want shadows on that's cool that's fine but turning them off can actually help out just being able to see a little bit better for the longest time i had them off and then i think i had to uninstall the game and then i forgot to turn them back off again once i had to once i reinstalled it so overall this one's just kind of a press for things if you like it with shadows if you like it without but you can actually come in here and turn off the shadows which is pretty pretty big if i'm going to be honest all right so now we're going to go to our nvidia control panel so just right click on your desktop and this should pop up there we go all right cool so now we're going to start off let's make sure we start off on our change resolutions here so you're not going to want to change your resolution. That's fine. The main thing you're going to be looking at is your monitor's hertz rate. So I run a 244 monitor and I have it selected as so. But a lot of times when you plug it in, it's not actually set to max or you get to one of these higher HD ones. And if I was on that, it would only be 60 hertz. And I don't really care about the HD. I want my 240 hertz. Now, a lot of time, most people are going to have like 144 or or 60 hertz, whatever it may be. Just make sure that you have your maxed out hertz for whatever it may be, because you're really going to be like penalizing yourself essentially by not having the max hurt rate. So just, just make sure this is set to max, whatever it may be. It's a little change, but you'll definitely notice the big thing. So we're gonna go over to manage 3D settings over here. And for the most part, this is just set to be wanting to get as much performance as I can. For the most part, there's a few things, but for the most part, I have a lot of, there's a few different things, but overall I have most things off. I'll just scroll through it a little bit. I'm not gonna go over all of them in crazy detail but you can kind of just look through so just make sure your low rip just make sure your low latency is set to high or ultra make sure you're using your proper gpu and performance mode highest available for refresh rates vsync off and overall i i could probably maybe optimize these out a little bit more but for the most part, I think they do fine. They My PC runs good. And turning just some of these off or on, depending on what it is, can definitely help out a lot. And then lastly, we're going to look at how to change the colors a little bit, make things pop a little bit more if you'd like. So if you come over to adjust desktop color settings, you get all these little knobs that you can do so you can change the gamma and all that stuff. But the main thing I'm going to look at is digital vibrancy. This will just make it so the colors pop a little bit more. We'll just take a look at the background here just so you can kind of understand what I'm saying. So I currently have mine set to 70 to help it pop a little bit more. But typically on average, it's just going to be 50. That's normally what every like computer is just set to. And then when I turn it to 70, it makes it a little bit more colorful. And then if you go to like 100, it really makes it like pop. And this will obviously affect your game as well. But we're just going to keep it on 70 because personally, that's what I like. But if you're looking to get a little bit more color out of whatever your game you're playing, I highly recommend just adjusting some of these settings to get what you want. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but depending on the person, it can really help you see a little bit better. But that's all the NVIDIA control stuff that we need. Mainly, like I said, just make sure your resolution's good. Maybe just make sure some of this stuff is off or on, depending on what it may be. Just make sure it's like high performance mode. Make sure you've got your proper GPU. It should already be set to that low 
low latency. And then if you want to just copy my settings, you can, doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but it can, any little bit can squeeze out a little extra FPS at the end of the day. And then lastly, in terms of equipment, I use a Final Mouse Starlight Pro 10s edition for my mouse. And I've never really been a huge Final Mouse person. This one was just available, so I thought I might as well buy it. And I actually managed to get one because I had always wanted to try it. And I thoroughly enjoy it. I don't mind it. And it's one of the better mouses I've tried. There's definitely better out there. Personally, I've been looking at buying a Razer Viper version 3 Pro because I've heard that one's really, really good. And I personally like Razer products. I'll probably end up getting that at some point and will update, I guess, if I enjoy that more. In terms of keyboards, I use the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition. This one is a little bit older. There are definitely some newer versions of it, but overall it does the job. It's pretty responsive. It's pretty clicky, which I like. And it is also an 80% keyboard. I don't have the smallest keyboard. I'm not running a 60% just because I do like to have some arrow keys, but it does not have the number pad on it, which is still, I think, a small enough addition. If I ever get to the point where I have a dual PC setup, then I'd probably have my gaming computer as a 60% and then the other one is, you know, just a normal keyboard. In terms of headset, I just run a pair of Astro A50s. It's a wireless headset. It's nice. I don't, I don't know. I'm a little indifferent about it. I've had a couple different headsets in my past, never really found one that I really, really liked, but this one is kind of falling apart, so I'm probably gonna have to get a new one at some point anyway. But as of right now, Astro A50 is what I am running. And then in terms of mouse pad, I don't really have anything special. It is just a random mouse pad. I don't really know where it's from. It's just, it's just big. <laughs> I've never really been the person that thinks a mouse pad is really, really gonna change the way that you play. I could be wrong. Maybe I'll get a really good mouse pad one day and I'll be, my mind will be blown. And then in terms of the computer, I have a 3080, an i9, and 36 gigabytes of RAM, and nothing nothing super, super crazy anymore, but it's definitely a, more than what I would need for D2. And then in terms of monitor, I have a BenQ Zowie 24.5 inch, 240 hertz gaming monitor. Overall, fantastic monitor. I love it. I don't really necessarily feel you need 240 hertz. I think 144 is typically fine for most people, but at the end of the day, it's still a fantastic monitor and I personally love it. But yeah, so that is all my settings for anybody who is wondering or is looking to get a little bit of a higher FPS or hell even turn off their shadows. A lot of this stuff is preference. It really depends. If you are more of a PVE style gamer, you're not really gonna care as much about you know FPS by any means. If you get a certain amount, then you're typically good where something like in PVP, you want as much as you can get because it can just give you a more advantage on other players. But overall, pretty much moral of the story, just run everything on low and make sure you don't have like stuff like mouse acceleration on. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe as it does help out with the channel a lot. And thank you guys so much and have a good rest of your day.